Look what I'm drinking. This is a Belgian beer. Bacchus. Uh, crack? Bacchus Creek? Bacchus so, is a... Is a <laughs> like a monk. Isn't it? Well, Bacchus is the name of a Greek Roman god, isn't it? Or mm. I made that up. It's a sour cherry beer, apparently. Sour cherry beer. It's in a plastic, almost well, brown paper bag. Isn't it? I like... I like it, the fact it's, it's the first ever beer you've had where it's been... I haven't tried it yet, just, just, oh, yeah. Just, yeah. just admiring the bottle. It smells like sour cherries, like those sort of Haribo cherry, cherry sweets, but not quite as sweet. No, I don't, no? No, not for me, not sweet enough. <laughs> no, but it smells like cherries, right? Mm. Tell them. I've never heard of a cherry beer. The Belgians, they love their fruit. That's quite nice. I think you'd like that. I don't I'm, think not gonna, I'm not going to share the bottle. I don't think you'd consider it a beer. I, think, I say that. I, tell, I say that to my um, my wife. I don't think you. I think you'd like that. But then I'm filtering that, through my life. Is that when you feed beer to your to a one year old child? <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! We're recording here. I don't do that. Um, so just we saying, are. Just what's the place called the Saint. It's the Saint. yeah. It's a Fuller's Pub, isn't it? It's the is Saint it? Bar and Kitchen. We're on Paternoster Square, in our old stomping ground. Very close in to St. Paul's, a, yeah, to, to BT Centre, which, according to Nigel, is soon to be not BT Centre anymore. I think it's the last building they own as it stands. Really? I think so. They've just crazy. sold everything else off. Yeah, I'm drinking uh, on the recommendation of the barmaid, waitress, barmaid slash come bar Bar staff. She um, she says it's a very good beer, very popular beer. It's sour sour cushion. So. Sour, sour cherries. cherries, and I do, I do quite. I'm not quite sure how many I would, I would drink. It's strong, is it? It's uh, six percent. That's stronger for, than my side. The Belgian beer is not that strong, but it's definitely it doesn't taste that strong because of the cherry. And from um, Belgium to Cornwall, I'm drinking a bottle of Cornish Orchard. I don't know if I can say it. Corn, Cornish Orchards Gold Cider, pressed, blended, and bottled at West North Manor Farm, Cornwall, uh, near Liscard. Can you tell the difference between that and your Somerset cider? No, absolutely not. It's lovely, I see. It's nice and cold. It's reasonably sweet. It's quite nice. Good. She said it was medium. Well, she said it's a long, dry finish on it. It's nice, though. It's, it's, um, I think I'm quite thirsty as well, so this isn't going to... This pint isn't going to uh, hang around for Cheers, too mate. Long. Cheers. I'm not going not gonna to clink much because... Uh, got paper on it. Paper bag. I quite like that. It's a nice touch, that. It's a... Uh, it's a new one, isn't it? It's a bit Exciter different. Exciter feature. It's a bit different. Makes it stand out a little bit. Good day. Yeah, we've been um, we've been doing a. I'm going to say a basic course today in terms of the the Scrum Alliance um, pathway. development pathway. It's at the basic level. It's a, we're doing a certified Scrum product owner course. So yeah. Unusual to be doing that together. Thank you. Um, worked hard. Well, Inquisitive bunch. We had um, we had to improvise through several parts. It wasn't yeah. we were caught out a little bit by expectations, not perhaps well being different to what we were going in with. So yes. we, we adjusted, we pivoted. So that's that's a that's a good example of proxies, I suppose, handoffs, I suppose. So w- one person arranging the training course on behalf of many, speaking to somebody else, yeah, um, thinking. That they want one thing, but actually, it's quite a, it's a real mixed bag of, of people with different experiences, different roles. Um, and so, but sometimes the best training courses are when you've got a, re- a real mix of oh, different yes. across function of the company in one room because yeah. you do get you hear all sides of the story, don't you? But we we planned on this being a, pr- a, a pure product owner, almost a pure product owner training course, if you like, just, just product owner techniques and strategy mindset yeah. and stuff, yeah. But actually, it's, it's a lot more than that, so. <coughs> I'm, this is something I, 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 I'm proud of. Is that am I allowed to be proud of? Maybe that we can pivot. We don't have a script, um, and so the plan that we had at the start has changed. Mm. Even today and tomorrow is going to be very different to how we planned it, morphing to the needs of the of the class really, while still meeting the learning but objectives of the Scrum Alliance. But we are lucky. We've got a a little bit of a variety of materials that we can go to. Well, that's to the beauty that. of 
Well, that's the backbone of resilience, isn't it? Having options. Yeah. Options increases re resilience. Experience. Having done this for so long and d done so many different types of exercises and courses and real life examples that you can build it as you go. Yeah. Still. Uh, <coughs> Interesting when, when we, we came back to uh, as we were walking in today and we saw the old BT office. You and I said to each other about the old B, the old days. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of fondness in our memories, but there's also a lot of oh my word, I'm not sure I'd want to <laughs> go back to that hard. again. Yeah. <coughs> and we had quite a lot of prisoners, didn't we, in the early days, as you call them, people who didn't want to didn't want to didn't want to be there didn't, didn't want to be, be there room. when you're told, running a training course. To be there. There. And even on projects, you didn't really want to be involved in it or didn't want to change. And that, that was that Passing. was hard back Passing in the day. Just, you didn't yeah. have the, the tools and the experience and the, the skills maybe to, to engage them differently. Um, but we, I got an email from... Did I get an email? I, think I have a feeling I got an email. Did you get an email from the Scrum Alliance about um, course expectations? Student expectations? No. So I know it, ha it doesn't happen all the time, but I, I, I do sometimes not certify people. Oh, okay, right. I'm not sure everybody is of the same mindset as me, but I, I'm not a fan of someone just getting a certification just because they've turned up. They need to participate. Yeah, I'm quite... And you're I, the same. I try to be quite explicit at the beginning of a training course that... This isn't just a, an attendance-based... Attendance isn't um, the fact that you're in the seat. Attendance is actively participating. Yeah. And, um, I put on my T's and C's. Well, that, and, that's, and that's effectively what... what the, I, I think it was an email. said, it's okay as long as you're quite clear about what's... Expected. Yeah. yeah. So on my website, uh, it, it would say this isn't... Uh, no, don't, don't, don't expect PowerPoint, you're not going to get it. No. You need to, and especially in our advanced classes, you know, you'll need to do some pre-work, you'll need to do some post-work, you'll need to get involved. It's not sit there and soak up information. Yeah. Um, and just that clarity of expectations, I think, is important. When it comes to these entry-level things, it's not as, not as strict. But especially where, I know this is probably going to change over the course of the next few months, stroke within the year, hopefully. But at the moment, so we're teaching a PO class today. Yep. There is no test to fall back on. True. So it is hugely down to trainer, or in this case, trainers, me and you in the room, as to whether we deem students, um, what's the word, kind of appropriate or kind of should be um, granted yeah. a license. They kind of based, take our word for that. Yeah, based on our our subjective view of how they've performed in the class. We have, there are some basic constraints there, right? I mean, we're not allowed to just say anybody can, can be certified. They have to turn up to a two-day class. I mean, that's the bare minimum. Yeah. They have to be there. And if they, if they duck out for an hour or two... And, then, and I think, but even that is... is um, that's non-specified by the Scrum Alliance, as far as I'm concerned, isn't it? Or is it, am I wrong? No, I, I'm, maybe I'm operating on... on, on um, maybe you're right, I'm not. Well, you... I know Nigel used to operate on a half hour basis. If you missed half an hour, you were out. Or you, you wouldn't be certified. I think that's, that's maybe a personal thing, maybe. I know, I, I know... I think it's a very clear boundary, though. You need to attend two full days of training. Yeah. That's, that's well, that's... The, if you're... So the difference, again, between public and private training is on public courses, you generally get people who've sought out that course, yeah. found a date that they can do, and they, you'd hope are going to attend fully those two days. Yeah. I completely get that some people have childcare, pickups, drop-offs, or emergencies they have to attend to. I get that completely. And, and I can, if, that, if, if that's known to me, I can work around that. We can adjust things if we need to. But if you're setting, um, in a private setting, if you're attending a two-day class, you've got to assume I'm required from nine to five, you know, a full business day. Yeah, but that, uh, you, you put an interesting caveat there. So, people, if people tell you in advance, then you can do something about it. Yeah. Uh, so, as well as you know, on your website, two full days of training, whatever, 
and then at the start of the class, we'll say, or even before that, some, some pre, that, the, the joining instructions, you know, you've got you to be there, you've got to stay there. But then we start off today saying, you need to be here, you need to stay here. It's pretty, pretty low bar to begin with. Uh, does anybody, can anybody not meet that? And it's a, it's a horrible, a horrible thing. I hate doing it. And also, very, if you imagine the, who's going to be a person that stands up in a class, even in a private class that people you know would say, I'm not going to be here. You know, admitting that they're not fully committed. But That's it's a important big call, to do, right? isn't it? It is important. It's a big call to make. It's a big call to make with relative strangers that you've, um, you know, you've never met. But it's and the it right thing. It is the right thing to do, it, and you take a lot of takes a lot of courage to do that because you potentially, as a trainer, jeopardise that relationship you have with that student or students through that two days. Yeah. And it, it it really plays on your people pleaser trait. You, you want to please people. Of course you, don't you want, do. You want people, them. people to be happy, but equally you want you have integrity, right? Yeah, you got to. Sometimes you just got to. There's nothing really. I'm putting my career on the line if I don't. Uh, I'm putting the, the the value of the, the certification for everybody else on the line. Where, do, where where then do you draw the line? So can I you miss an hour. Can you miss an hour and a half? An hour and thirty one minutes. And it's not just a, so a different example, but it's a similar thing about doing the right thing. I remember I rang you at the time about this because I think it was. I think I was doing a job for you. This was a, a couple of years back. But I think I rang you or texted you in the evening. I said, Jeff, these. It was after day one of a two-day class, and I just said, half the people in this room are actively um, destroying this, this two-day class. They, they don't want to be here, and in fact, they don't like what we're doing. Yeah. They don't want it to succeed, and they're trying to convince other people that it won't succeed. They're, you know, they're, they are destroying, from inside, they're destroying this class. And I think there was a huge fallout from it, and there was a huge lots of different people got involved but, but I didn't certify about think about half that class yeah. that's the most extreme I ever had and there was a lot of people complained I took a lot of people out to one side one to one I discussed with each of those people it wasn't a time based thing it was an attitude based thing yeah. I said as it stands right now unless you change how, you, how you're going about this I am not prepared to certify you as a certified scrum master this way at this point because I don't think you are showing the traits a scrum master should about being positive about change. And it's not that you, you don't want dissent or challenge no. or alternative opinions, but there's an element of, is this constructive or is it undermining, sabotaging and stopping other people from learning? I have. But that's a really difficult thing to do. Yeah. I really struggle with that because the easiest thing to do was to just stick, get my head down, get to the end of the class, tick the boxes, certify them all, Nothing will ever ban. Nothing, I'll never hear about it again. Yeah. But it was, for me, it was too much. You know, kind of testing my integrity. Of, it wasn't the right thing to do. So, how do, can you think? Apart from calling me, was there anything else that you sort of did? Uh, any processes you went through? Any? I don't know anything you did that, that made it a little bit easier for you to do the right thing, rather than just stick your head down and tick the box and ignore it so I needed to I don't think I ever went I've wrote them down but I certainly was quite categoric about what I, I'd observed so to, to, to help verify my decision I went back through in my head well this person did this said this at this point deliberately said that, you know tried to said this to this person was rude to this person about these things and that's for me. That's gathering evidence. So gathering the evidence in my head and trying. For what purpose? I suppose to, to try and verify that this is repeat in my head that, that that's not what is expected. Okay. So to so because that that's important to me that question because what you said there is that that was for you to effectively prove to yourself that this was an issue rather yes. than just a feeling. Yes rather than to cover your ass if anybody complained about what you were going to do. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, but I was, I remember at the time, I was very fearful about doing it. I don't know if I did, did anything else. I was, I was, and it just distracted me, massive, distracted me massively, and I think didn't really help the other people that, that, that were there, more there to learn, because it came about me 
trying to manage those people rather yeah. than teaching the class. I, I, still find it, I still find it difficult. It, it, the word that always comes into my head in those situations is conflict. And a natural reaction from, from many people is, do I really want that? Do, do I, really, I want, want it, yeah. Do I want that conflict? Um, because I know it's going to cause me anxiety. But then weighing up the alternative, the conscious alternative, of, you know, how would I feel about myself when I go home and I weigh up non-action? as yeah. opposed to action or action yeah. A against action B and so I have a few sort of questions that I, my, that I ask myself when I find myself in those types of situations if I realise I'm in that situation it's not easy to realise it all the time I'll ask myself things like you know if my kids were watching what would I want myself to do mm. yeah um, you know, what kind of example would I like to set for my kids that kind of thing um, what action if I, if I look back on this when I'm retired, what action would I be proud of? That kind of thing. Yeah. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to think, okay, that's worth it. And and we've talked a lot about fear setting in the past, haven't we? I think on these, certainly on, on these podcasts. Actually just playing out consciously, what do you think will happen if you do do the right thing? Yeah. And quite often a lot of those things you realise actually probably won't happen. Yeah. Um, I'll give you a recent example. Okay. I don't want to stop you there, but it's... Um, I'm not sure if I told you about this, but so recent holiday, non-work, so this is completely out of the work context, on the Eurostar, yeah. um, booked a seat on the way home, yeah. having a lo- lovely holiday away with the kids and the wife, going to take our seats, it becomes quite clear quite soon we're sat next to a group of very loud uh, squaddies, do we need to explain squaddies? You might do, yeah. So, um, so military, um, or certainly ex-military um, personnel on a train who are in civvies in, in kind of regular clothes but they're, they're off duty but they have they're, they're, they're quite close as a group they're certainly quite loud um, and they are sitting right in with amongst my family and they've got a lot of alcohol on the tables they're drinking and already before we leave Lille which in France we're, we're already at, the noise levels are quite high so my kids are there and I think you're right my, having the, my kids there doesn't make me do things that I probably would think longer and harder about or certainly be slower to react because I, I'm taking a decision now not just for myself but for, for, my, other, for yeah. my two kids and I, I said I'm going to say something now early it is better to get this out there now I think that's good, that's good yeah. but I think I would have dwelled on it a lot longer so yeah. I just said I, said I made eye contact with one of the guys I said look I don't mind I can't I don't mind the noise and the volume, but what I am, I don't want is the language. And my kids are here, and although they've got their headphones on, they're watching an iPad, they will, you know, I don't want them to hear the type of language that might occur. So you were anticipating bad I was, language. Had so, you heard bad language at that point? Yeah, okay. a couple of times. Okay. So I was, and I, I made an assumption that this is probably going to get worse. Okay. So I wanted to put my, it wasn't an easy thing to do, but I felt it was the right thing to do by my kids. And I didn't need, I didn't discuss it with my wife, I just did it. I didn't you know, ring anyone and ask for advice, yeah. I just did it. And I think that does make a huge difference when you take yourself away as to what would you or your children or an innocent bystander expect to do. But this by, the bystander effect, nobody else said anything. Interesting. Did they think you've solved the problem? I don't know. Because the risk there is that everybody jumps in and then it feels like that, that party is getting ganged up on, mm, mm. which can have a negative effect because then they feel that their autonomy is being impinged and they need to exert their independence yeah. again. But, but we ended up moving further down the carriage later on in the journey because it did get, get worse. Okay. But I felt that it was kind of, they knew why I was moving. Yeah. I didn't have to explain myself. I felt more comfortable with, they knew why I was unhappy. You could argue I could have gone further and and, and reiterated, yeah. but my secondary tactic was then to say, it's happened, yeah. I'm not happy with it, I'm moving away. Well, I think that's interesting. Another reason, because alcohol will generally change the dynamic. Yes. Yeah. So it's not um, you're not necessarily dealing with rationality no, at that point. No. And so doing that early while they were still relatively sober, that that's that's why I felt I did the right thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tough, okay. tough conversation but I felt it. Was, I felt I handled it as best I could yeah interesting you felt you had 
do, do you think you know anybody that would have handled it better? Good question. I don't know. I don't know if... I think maybe people I know that would have handled it differently. I'm not so sure it would be better. I can, I can know people that would have been a lot more um, alpha about it, a lot more tr controlling about it. Yeah. So maybe, so certainly my wife went to, her tactics were different. She, she didn't feel confident enough to confront them. She went to speak to the train manager and asked if we could be moved. Yeah. Um, or if we, there are ex extra seats in there, so she knew that she had that fallback. Yeah. That's a different tactic. I know some of my friends that would have perhaps turned up the aggression. For me, that wasn't how I would approach it. No. And tackled it differently. The reason I ask that is because that's another tactic that I use. Um, and I've written about it in a different, in a, in a specific context of an inner boardroom. Yeah. So when you're trying to make a decision and you, you're unsure, and you think, well, who, whose opinions do I trust? And what would they say? And you know, a good boardroom a good team really has a diverse set of perspectives uh, and these people I mean, the good thing about it being uh, in your mind is it could be anybody it doesn't yeah. have to be real no. you don't even have to know them no. um, you can have Bugs Bunny and you're in a boardroom it doesn't matter uh, and, and sometimes having that you know Elmer Fudd or Dick Dastardly or Wiley Curiosity or whatever can be, can be quite enlightening Homer Simpson but who would who would approach this situation really really well or conversely who would approach this situation really really badly and why and is there a way that I could emulate some of that? Yeah. Is a question that I find quite useful to me. Um, and you know, different people have different strengths and sometimes you can borrow those strengths from them just by playing that role. Yeah. Helps, helps you do the right thing a little bit. It's hard, isn't it? It is hard. But then some people find it a lot easier to do the right thing. Yeah, does it, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. I think the thing that drives a lot of those behaviours is, is fear, isn't it? Is, is this idea of what's, what's going to, how is this going to come back on me? Yeah. Because the, those people could have reacted quite really badly. And I mean, in a worst case scenario, unlikely to happen. Yeah. In a worst case scenario, they could physically overpower you. Yeah. And my kids are at risk. Yeah. So my kids. But then I think I grow a lot more um, courageous when my kids are in. Yeah. Similar situation, again, completely different again, but we were at a skate park with my kids and there's a 13, 12, 13 year old boy who's again using language that I don't think is I don't think my kids want to hear. So my gut and I was I was very different then. I went over and I actually face to face confronted I suppose it's again a bit of a, a status thing, isn't yeah. it? I, there's a group difference between a group of squaddies and a thirteen year old kid who's mouthing off. And I said I don't think your language is appropriate and I don't want my children to hear it. Can you tone it down? So you've made a request. Yeah. I mean, non-violent communication is a structure that, that I'll often give to people when they don't really have the confidence to, to come up with their own words. So they can they can name something. And you, you've effectively went through that. But I, but, well, just, just trying to repeat what I said then. I don't think it's appropriate. It's more of a judgment. That's, that's, that's... So, yeah, but when you, when you were doing your squaddy example... Yeah. You'd observed something. You you told them how that impacts you, yeah. because of a need you have, which is related to your children. Yeah. And you made a request. Yeah. And that's a fairly understandable process mm. for other people to be able to empathise with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if those squaddies then lapsed yeah. later on, mm. they would have been aware of it. Yeah. Uh, and they still have the choice to say no. Freedom of speech, we can do this, whatever, we have the authority to do this, I'm not going to buy it. But you've made a, a logical, rational, it sounded to me, judgment free. It's interesting. So I think I feel I, whether this plays into the whole easy, how easy this is. I made, as I said, I made on contact. There's a group of, group of lads mm. there. Some of them were were drinking more than others some of them were stood up some were sat down I made eye contact with someone that made eye contact with me okay so I don't know if that makes a difference that I felt 
again, I, this is a feeling. I felt he knew he could sense my discomfort. Yeah. Before I, I think I, there was one glance, and maybe I glanced down at what they were doing, glanced back at him, and glanced at my kids, and glanced back at him. There's a non-verbal so invitation. There's a, there's a non-verbal acceptance there of this could be, this is going to potentially become an issue. Um, and he kind of almost silently, in body language, acknowledged that the kind of he knew he he stopped talking enough to make to to slow down and 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 acknowledge that I was there, and that kind of then 10 to 15 seconds passed when I'm setting up the iPad for the kids. I look back. He again makes eye contact with me because I've made eye contact with him, and then I said something. The other thing that I noticed that you did there was how to word it. You gave them an out in a way. Yes. So it was. They don't have to stop. They just have to change. So you said you can be as loud as you like. Effectively, these weren't the words you used. Yeah. Be as loud as you like, and you can you can sing and you can joke, but yeah. just the language. That's yeah. all. That's all I want you to do. The language. Yeah, yeah. Um, rather than stop what you're doing. It's yeah. bad. Everything you're doing is bad. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that that I think giving people an out. And an option to change. I'm reading into this because of what I know about you. There was no way that, knowing you, you would have you would have had that conversation without that some kind of empathy. That no. I'm not saying you are a, a, the person who gets drunk on a train and starts singing, but you are the kind of person that gets drunk on a train and starts <laughs> singing. So you know how much fun that can be, and you, you can empathise with them in that situation. And you know it's a bit of fun, and you're the party pooper and whatever. But that empathy builds a lot as well. It's not you're not coming down on them as a. This might not translate very well to our international audience, but as a Mary Whitehouse, mm. complete judgmental, um, very very strict Victorian style mm. attitude. And I think there's a huge difference that um, of having that direct, confronting that directly. Whereas I can imagine some people I know would have verbalised their their. Um, their disdain for the behaviour, yeah. but to the person next to them, but just talking oh, loudly. Passive aggressive. Yeah. So kind of, oh, I just can't hear myself think. The, 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 the language is terrible. But t- telling their spouse or their partner, rather than, and that actually attracts more. It seems yeah. to attract more attention. Escalates. Yeah. That's a classic. I, I follow a, a Twitter account, Very British Problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a classic British response, isn't it? The passive aggressive tut. Mm. Uh, and you expect other people to, to change their behaviour just because you tucked yeah. rather than actually tell them what you what you feel and what you want. Um, so just coming back to your original question, do you think culture plays a, a part in how easy it is to do the right thing rather than the easy thing, not to do nothing? I think yes, um, because I don't I don't remember ever being told that as a Brit. You should just let things slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just something. That it's happens. the British thing way to do. Just, yeah. You see it a lot. Turn a blind eye. Part of your personality. Turn a blind eye. Whereas I know other cultures, having worked internationally, that just wouldn't stand for that. No. They would say it, and they wouldn't see it as conflict either. No. They wouldn't even see an argument as a conflict. They would see it as, a, as an exchanging of views. Uh, so, but there, I think equally, there are probably I wouldn't be able to name. Them but there are probably some cultures that actually would see a, a physical altercation as the right way to settle it. Wow. You know? Yeah. I, 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 going, maybe going back in time, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That idea of, you know, you've got an opinion, I've got an opinion, let's fight. A duel, yes, yeah. to the death. So, I'm not saying the British culture is the wrong thing at all, but um, I think we all have something, well, I certainly have something that I work on in that. I find it difficult and I work on it all the time. Mm. Uh, and there are, there are some tools that I've picked up that I know help me do that. And you know, when I'm working with a team, any team really, <coughs> it's, even, it's even harder in a team because you have an opinion of what the right thing is and I have an opinion of what the right thing is. But that might not be the same. And if yeah. you're talking about a team of seven people, you might have seven subjective opinions of what the right thing is. Yeah. So how do you then deal with that? Do you just let things go? For me, I'd facilitate 
that conversation amongst the team. So there's a team we can say, right, this is the, this is where the line is. I know you, you did a session. You did a session years ago about what an acceptable level of swearing was in yeah. the team, didn't you? Language, yeah, and then um, expletives and things like that, yeah. And that, you know, what's what what do we collectively agree is the line that should not be crossed? Yeah, and. Um, even as, I mean, we we're both big fans of stand-up comedy, yeah. And um, we go and watch a lot of live shows, and there's points that you think different, you know, different lines within the audience, and you get a sense. And all oh, comedians do this; they play they play a line or a joke to test where the line is. Yes. And then they push it. We had that. We had that the other day, didn't we? We saw somebody said that joke was a barometer. Yes. So play it early to see, okay, what's exactly here where and what's we are. Not. Yeah. Because I'm, uh, I'm back to courses and training. I generally don't swear in training courses. Maybe the occasional crap, or the occasional, okay. occasional shit. Yeah. But I know some trainers who we won't know <laughs> who go full, full F and C bomb. Well, no, they're maybe not well, the C bomb. Well, well. I, but I, w- I, I think I judge that. Maybe not always successfully. <laughs> But um, I will know. I won't be the first to swear. No. So I'll, I'll sense. Oh, you, so you sense whether someone else has gone there first? Yeah, yeah. yeah. In I, the class. I, I, no, I will never be the. I, well, I, I try not to be the. Uh, oh, okay. My intention is not to be the first person to swear. Okay. Uh, and so what, I'm listening out for it. Ah. And then see, and then sensing the room to yeah, see yeah. whether there's uncom- discomfort. And if there isn't, then I'm happy to match them. Yeah. Uh, because I like matching language. I like matching that kind of thing banter and um, just fitting in but um, no I wouldn't I wouldn't impose my level of vulgarity on a team oh, interesting well I try not to anyway thank you yes thank you do you want to try this before I get my coronavirus all over it <laughs> oh that's nice oh, oh. <laughs> it's got First a kind of a, a bit of a dirty aftertaste it's just that I don't like the taste of beer. See, I didn't. I can't taste beer. Though. That tastes like Bakewell tarts, which I suppose is you right. You like Bakewell tarts. I do. <laughs> I do like Bakewell tarts, but it's got. It's more of a gritty, gritty taste. I like a pure sugar taste. That's good. I think we just about cooked that one. That's a good. It's a. It's a meaty discussion topic, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tricky one. But it's something that every, well, outside of work, we've all got to we've all got to figure out where that line is, and how do we get more comfortable? And I think we instinctively know when we've crossed it, or more accurately, possibly when somebody else has crossed it and yeah. we haven't yeah. done anything. So whatever it is, whatever whatever tool technique you've got to help you be more courageous, I suppose. Really, whether it's fear setting, whether it's imagine, you know, hypotheticals, what would, my, what, what would I want my kids to see me do? You know, what do I want to be proud of? What do I want to be in my epitaph? Or whatever, whatever it help, whatever helps you get to that point, rationalise it. Um, I think it's helpful. The, o- the only thing I'll say on that is it's very, very easy to beat yourself up of, oh, I wish I had done this in the past. I wish I had done this, um, and sort of whipping yourself of I was weak I didn't do what I should have done um, I don't think that's helpful no. to a degree there's no amount of reflection okay that's interesting I didn't do that I would like to have been able to do that if the circumstances arise again what would make me more likely to do that mm. um, it's interesting um, this might get cut and it might be not relevant I was quite surprised the comedy store players never review a performance what do you mean review Never talk about it. Really? Yeah. Never have a retrospective? No. That was one of the things I was quite surprised about was if it happened, it happened. If it was shit, it was shit. If it was great, it was great. When the, when the curtain goes down, that performance is kind of... What's the rationale behind that? I don't know. I never got to the bottom of it. It's just... I think it was... It was just that whatever happened, happened for the right reasons and we did the, right, the best thing at the time. And there's always another. T- there's always the next performance. Yeah, I can see benefit. You know that it's never going to be critiqued. Yeah. 
so there's you, you can act freer yeah um, but equally I think there's a potential missed opportunity there yeah interesting isn't it? but maybe that would be because of their, the height of their profession maybe I don't know interesting anyway it's an aside anyway we're, we've um, we've eaten our time box here yeah we're on to pint number two so this could be a, a long evening at this rate I'm quite thirsty well cheers mate cheers bud the right thing is to stop yeah we're going to carry on ta-da